Hey everybody, I'm Jeremy, I'm here with Daryl today. Thanks for coming, Daryl. Yeah, very welcome, glad to be here. We're gonna be talking about the SDKs today, but specifically the .NET one. So as a .NET developer, why would I use the Microsoft Graph SDK? Well, the, the SDK allows you to just get at the data that is on the graph that much easier. We can help you build requests and we can help you do all the serialization and deserialization of models and a whole bunch of other stuff. So as an example, we get a lot of feedback around throttling, for instance. Is there a way that the SDK can make that easier for me as a developer to manage that kind of thing? Absolutely. We handle a whole bunch of different standard HTTP status codes. We have a middleware pipeline that kind of sits behind uh, the HTTP client library and can handle things like 429 responses and 503 responses and all the redirect codes. And over time, we'll be adding more pieces of middleware to handle those standard HTTP responses. That's great. So I'm thinking as a developer, like if I've already kind of started making a bunch of calls to the graph in .NET, and now I want to kind of introduce myself to the SDK, is it all or nothing, or are there things that I could benefit from if I'm already using HTTP Crest to do GET and POST calls? Yeah, if you're already using HTTP Client, we have a mechanism where we have an HTTP Client factory that will create you an HTTP Client that's already been pre-set up with all these pieces of middleware. So you can immediately get all of these uh, retry and throttling type behaviors out of the box and just plug it straight into your existing application. That's really neat. So how does a developer get started with this? Could you show us on your computer? Absolutely. Uh, well, why don't we just start with a demo of the, the, the simplest thing, just a console app. Here I have one preset up that's just basically empty, and I pulled in a couple of packages. There's a Microsoft Graph package, the Microsoft Graph Core, and the Graph Auth. These are the three packages that we're going to use for this demo. So here we are. First thing we're going to do is we're going to create ourselves a client for the graph, and it's called Graph Service Client. Graph Service Client. There we go. Excellent. Okay, now, uh, as soon as I have that client, I can now, uh, I have a fluent interface, so I can do me to get at my data, you can get at your messages, you can get all kinds of data, but let's just keep it simple with me. Uh, I'm gonna convert this into a request now, and then do a get, an HTTP get method on it. Now, this is, we're gonna assign this to a variable here, var user equals, and that is an async method. So we're going to get there, and then when we get that result back, we're going to show some information. Console.writeLine, so we can actually prove that it worked. User.DisplayName. Okay, excellent. Now, you'll notice that we're still getting the red squiggly here, right? Because mm -hmm. you need to know who I am. I need to authenticate myself with against this API. So if we hold, hit the parentheses here, we'll see in the IntelliSense that we need an authentication provider. So an authentication provider is a set of classes that we've created to help you use the identity MSAL libraries. And we have one for each of the different types of OAuth flow. Today, we're just gonna use a simple auth interactive flow uh, so that it pops up a sign-in dialogue because we have a UI here. And under the covers, that's just using the MSAL libraries that yeah. identity provide. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. We're just an adapter and we call MSAL at the right point and we handle certain errors that come back from MSAL and we put the token in the appropriate place in the HTTP request, awesome. which is a thin layer. Okay, so uh, we need an auth provider here. Provider equals new interactive authentication provider. Now, it accepts as a parameter a public client application. And if you ever use MSAL, that's one of the two initialization classes that MSAL uses. And we use exactly the same thing. So if you already have an app using MSAL, it's easy to adapt here. So we are going to create ourselves uh, an MSAL application. Now you can just new it up as normal, but we also have a little helper here to go create you a client application. Now what you need to provide here is a client ID. Now I don't happen to remember the client ID by heart, so I'm going to go really? and copy Come on, it. Come on, surely. I've tried. It's just <laughs> I've got like the first six or seven characters, but the rest are... Still a mystery to me. Okay, let's just paste this client ID in here. Excellent, now let's grab that app and put it as a parameter to the auth provider. Now, it needs one more parameter in here. We need the scopes, because we want to say what different capabilities we want this application to have. In this case, we're just accessing user, so we can do user.read as our scope here. And you can just do a, uh, uh, an array of all kinds of different values right, right. here. So you can do um, mail.read or 
calendar read as well. Absolutely. Excellent. Okay, so now we're going to pass our auth provider into the graph service client, and we've got it all glued up. And when we run this, it should work. Now, it's first going to ask us to log in, so it's going to pop up the regular the regular uh, identification dialog. But now, this because this is the first time we've run this app with this client ID, it's now asking us to consent for this application to actually allow you to access the data. We hit accept, and there we go we get our username displayed. We have retrieved data from the graph. Excellent. So there's a lot of value that's kind of hidden underneath those few lines of code to do that, that you're getting for free by using our SDK Absolutely. rather than rolling it yourself. Yes. That's awesome. Thanks very much, Daryl. So if you want to get started with this as a developer, if you go to graph.microsoft.com and click on the Get In Started at the top in the top navigation, it'll give you a list of all the different platforms you can use. In this case, as a .NET developer, you just click .NET and you can go check out the SDK and the tutorials um, to get started. So thanks for your time today, Daryl. You're very welcome.